and Ness Goldal is actually a pretty good matchup for Ness. My opinion, um, Ness is able to get out of a lot of Skullidal strings because of his very, very uh, fast and good aerials overall. And so right off the bat, um, you know, you just see Noko applying all the shield pressure. And I think Libs was not expecting the up to knock up, seeing that he went for a down tilt instead of following up with another up air and up tilt maybe. Um, right now Noku is just like doing so so great on like catching out on a lot of Ribs' movement and landings. I love the up for the nair out of the PK fire, but of course Noku able to shield in time and punish him accordingly for the nailing on his shield. Squirtle was no stranger to fantastic out of shield options. Um, and ooh, and this can be really really big. I love the neutral air, uh, almost enough to actually take it out considering how light he is. Um, the shield attempt is definitely really, really important if uh, Noku had opted for a beefy up B or if he could have sharked and knocked him up a little bit. Um, nope, uh, Libs was lo ooh, really, really unfortunate for Noku that the uh, up B didn't fully connect it. Um, and you see Libs like maybe trying to catch, catch like a dash in of some sorts with those PK fires. And right now, Libs are dead. Looking through those back airs with the magnet. If he's able to land uh, one of the reverse magnets, that'll confirm into back air at every single percent, considering that Ness's magnet has set knockback. Um, choosing to opt for a really low recovery, he could have mixed between an air dodge or another upbeat. So, so really, really great for Gribs. It's really important that he mixes that up, because if he does that one more time, that can be a very confident down air from Noku. Um, ooh, and Ribs has to really, really be careful here because that up air is not safe on shield, especially against Charizard. But right now, Noku has so much rage, and this is definitely a character that can capitalize on it. Great back air from Ribs, able to take out the stock, not too far behind, only a whole stock down. Um, ooh, if he got the landing back air, that would have confirmed into a grab or perhaps a dash attack. Um, but Noku having all the mobility he needs to maneuver around these options. Um, I love the aggressive up air from Ludge from Ribs, able, um, you know, trying to maybe like call out like a two frame attempt from uh, Noku. Really, really great conversions, but he was just off on the spacing a little bit to follow up into a grab. Um, and right now, Ribs just needs to finally get back off, and the double jump cancel magnet will definitely do it. Right now, just like Glibs is trying to get anything started with maybe those rising forwarders able to connect into another forwarder to knock Noku off stage. Glibs able to get back to stage. And I love the drop down up B because it's definitely an option you're not expecting. And that flare blitz. Wow, able to kill from across the stage like that. So, going into game two right now, I feel like Glibs has to be a little bit, little bit uh, more careful in committing to those back airs as he's been doing in this game so far, and in the set so far, um, because he was like getting whiff punished for it a lot. And he has to be really, really careful around playing around Noku's shield. So he's done a great job of conditioning uh, Noku to shield right now, and I feel like going into game two definitely could play around using grabs a little bit more or down tilt through the shield pressure. Um, both of them. S uh, staying with the remains, opting to go for Kalos. And Kalos is definitely a fantastic stage for Ness to go to. Able to get his up B extensions by just knocking himself on the uh, flat walls. Uh, going for an up uh, forwarder after the PK fire, but not connecting it, considering how tiny of a body Squirtle is. And right now, Noku almost getting something started, and I love the shield pressure of the up tilts because I think if he was doing a jump aerial out of shield, that might not have been fast enough to get in between the hits. Um, great back here, just pushing him out, and another one, and the up B. Ooh, that's really, really dangerous, and I don't think that's enough, and that's enough to take out the stock. Um, Red sitting at a very confident lead right now, for uh, 46%. Not, not anywhere close to a dangerous uh, percentage, but Ivysaur is definitely a character that if he can throw Ness off stage, there's no reason Ness should be getting back. Uh, Ivysaur is so, so oppressive with the down airs. Um, I really like the usage of the up there, forcing Noku to play back and lose his attempt to ledge trap 
while Libs is able to inch a little bit closer to the ledge there. And again, Libs getting that uppy, which is just letting him come back, not really for free, but a whole lot better than if he would just to snap, not even risking the two frame option from the down smash. And I love the use of the magnet there to cross up the shield on double jump cancel. Oh, a down air into an up air, but Noku able to get the down B last minute. And Libs getting that bread and butter down the magnet into back air. So, so good. And this is completely different than we were seeing in game one. Um, I feel like Libs is a little bit more confident right now um, in his play. And is able just to do a whole lot better. Really great back air call out off the jump. And the back throw is definitely enough to take out the stock. And right now, Noku really, really needs to get an early percent kill with maybe a down air or an early up B kill. <gasps> And that's not enough to take, uh, yeah, Libs really great use of the uh, PK Thunder angle there, snapping directly to ledge, not even risking, uh, bouncing there. Wow, I love that patience, instead of committing to a grab maybe, he was just like, saying to himself, I know Noku is going to jump out of shield right here, and committed to the neutral air instead, and uh, wow, that's gonna be the stock, um... I think the momentum in the set right now is so much different. Like a complete reversal from it was game one. Game one, you just saw like Noku get a lot longer strings. You just saw Noku controlling the momentum a little bit. But going into game two, we saw, we just totally saw Ribs get those early percent kills on Squirtle. We saw him get those classic Ness gimps that Ness is known for. Um, and game three right now, I feel like there are just some questionable things that happen off stage with Noku. No biggie, he's gonna shake it off. Um, and for game three, they're going to opt for. It's interesting that Libs banned both FD and Pokemon Stadium too. Definitely not trying any funny business of landing against Ivysaur on FD. But right now they're gonna opt for Battlefield, and Battlefield can be. Both good and bad for Ness in this matchup. Bad in the sense that Ivysaur up and catching good landings, or Ivysaur up -y and getting so many extensions. But Ness is able to get fantastic things off of Forward Air and get a really, really great stuff out of like the PK Thunder juggles going. Um, I'm interested about that F Smash as possible. That was a turnaround grab that instead inputted itself as F Smash as Ultimate is known for, for its buffering. Um, Really, really great PK Fire, just calling out the charge of the neutral beam. Ooh, and the F-Tilt, because Ness was airborne, he wasn't able to get the conversion conversion off. Um, and again, like, I'm seeing so much great use of the PK Thunder offstage from Libs. I won't be surprised, though, if Noku is able to get a hard read on that and just call him out with a neutral beam, with, with the wind box pushing him out and forcing him to drift to his death. And that upbeat! Enough to take the stock so, so, like, through the middle of the stage, too, all the way to the horizontal blast zone. And the PK, th ooh, the PK fire. <gasps> and the back end is definitely something to look out for. So much knockback, even from such an early percent, that might have been enough to take the stock. But Ribs, great awareness, deciding to jump. Um, F tilt pushing Ness really, really far back. I love the fact that he saved his jump right now, able to mix up his recovery. But that was enough to take the stock. Um, and he's a little bit too slow on the magnet back air. As a result, uh, we're gonna see Noku live just a little bit longer. And Ness doesn't, ooh, almost getting it again. And that's gonna be enough to take it. The magnet falling up air, uh, which is a drag down that is able to confirm and see either up tilt or the grab. I love that um, from Ribs. Ribs trying to get something going again with the falling up air. But of course, trading with Squirtle and not getting that. And I love the way that Ribs has just been so patient recovering against Ivy Soil, mixing it up every single time. <gasps> a down air into a nail. Just definitely maximizing his damage output. And it would have been crazy if he was able to actually get the F smash off there, potentially closing out the stock. <gasps> that was so good from Ribs. Wow, using the invulnerability of Ness, he conditioned him throughout the whole game to expect, is he going to use his new, is he going to hit him with the thunder or not, but Ribs, just like with that great mix-up, I love that, it was so, so good, like the weak hit of back here, not able to follow up with anything, the nail out of shield once again, like all of these get off me options, <gasps> the 
that's so dangerous for Melko to recover high like that in the back air. Takes out the stock, definitely a little unexpected there. Um, I love the comeback that Libs is making in game three, but Noku clutched it out. Um, very, very close to one, I think, from Noku. Um, it had this been a best of five, I think we might have seen a very, very different. Um, um, I think he would have met a very, very different fate. Um, regardless, I think that was very excellently played from Libs. Um, Ribs was losing his stocks to Charizard, and I think Charizard and Nessus is very interesting in the sense that you're only going to be seeing Charizard come out when Ness is in disadvantage. You're going to be seeing Charizard come out when Ness is on ledge, and, 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 and Charizard has like those disjoints of like the back air and the tilts to worry about, which are just so, so outrageously menacing.